Thank you, Mum, for your unwavering faith. Despite circumstances, you were solid as a rock, and yeah, that was incredible. So thanks, Mum, for passing down all your prayers. And now I get to run with them. Thanks, Mum, for passing on your passion for cooking to me. Thanks, Mum, for being the strongest woman I know. Thanks, Mum, for your endless amounts of encouragement. Thank you, Mum, for everything that you've done. Uh, you've been a superhero to me and to everyone else. Thanks, Mum. Welcome to Curate Church Online. I'm Renee and I'm one of the pastors here at Curate and this is my mom Janelle. And um, today it's a really special day here in New Zealand. We like to call it Mother's Day. And what that means is we get to celebrate all the special mums in our lives. But I just wanted to start before we go any further by saying that we're so aware that for some of you, Mother's Day can be really difficult. Um, some have experienced losses um, and, it, and it can be a really hard day, but I wanna let you know that today, um, we're not just celebrating mums, but we're celebrating special women in our lives that really are like mothers to us. Um, and I just so love that I have my special mum here today, um, who's an incredible mum, and I thought I would love for her wisdom to be spread to everywhere because I know, I can vouch, she's amazing. So, um, <laughs> mum, can you tell us um, like maybe something that you've learned as a mum, some nuggets of gold that you can pass on. Okay, when I see young mums or mums with their young families, I just love it. It brings back so many incredible memories. But I also know what goes with that. There's lots of times where it's very tiring, very exhausting actually, and it's, that's life with young toddlers. But in that, it seems like it's never gonna end, but actually it does, and all too quickly. So they are some of the fondest memories of me being a mum, and I just say, cherish every moment. It's so incredible. I know that as a mum myself, it does feel like life goes fast, mm. and so you do need to take stock and um, just enjoy those special moments. And mum, can you tell me, because this incredible looking lady is also a mum of like nine grandchildren, I know, you wouldn't guess it, but um, Mum, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you've learned some things about being a nana that um, you could share with us as well. Okay, as a nana, it's a really incredible position, I think, very privileged. Um, I think that, um, that we all have a little bit more time than we did perhaps as a, as a mother to our own children. And we love these children just like our own, but we don't have the responsibility of being their parent. And I just think that as grandparents, we can cheer these children on, we get to know them individually, we spend time with them, we treat them, we can spoil them, and just love them to bits, actually. And at the end of the day, hopefully, we get to send them home. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've always so appreciated those times where we can have a little moment to just be ourselves, my husband and I, and um, we definitely appreciate that. Right. Um, <laughs> so that's so amazing. Um, but Mum, we've had this amazing competition running throughout the week. Yes, yes we have. Yeah. And um, I hear there's some really cool prizes. Yeah, there is some cool prizes, because today we really want to celebrate some of our mums in the Curate community and, um, and to bless some people here today. So what we've asked all through the week on social media is that you would send in some videos of your mum um, answering one of the questions that we've posted on social media. So if you wanna know more details, why don't you head onto any one of our social media platforms. And, um, and what you need to do is you need to post your video and tag Curate Church into your um, post. 
And um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a draw for some incredible prizes um, before 8 p.m. tonight. So it means wow. that you've got till 8 p.m. to get those videos in, which means oh, great. I've got till 8 p.m. to get a video in about you. So I better get onto it myself. But yeah, I could look, I could do with some of those prizes, <laughs> or at least one. <laughs> right. Okay. Onto it. So. Mum, today we have some incredible businesses in the Curate community that have actually um, sponsored us some amazing prizes um, today. But, you know, these businesses, they are, you know, we are wanting to support our local businesses in this time, but these businesses aren't just our local businesses. They are kingdom businesses. They are businesses that um, support what we do here in Curate. And so I want to make sure that we don't miss a single person out. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to read this list of businesses. So we want to thank um, the amazing gifts that have come from Paddington Store. We've got a very yummy um, cake mix that comes from Sage and Grace. We've got some Chaos and Harmony vouchers. So your mum can get some new shoes and they are great shoes. Um, we have some meal vouchers from Brooklyn Eatery and the Neighbourhood Kitchen. Such good pizza there, oh my gosh. Um, we also have some goodie baskets coming from New World Mount Monganui. Um, we have $50 vouchers to get your lockdown overgrowth sorted from Features Inc. We have a Betty Munro voucher. We've got beautiful Kayla Norris art, um, some A4 posters to give away there. Um, we also have some amazing books by Lisa Bevere called Without Rival. And, um, and so these are just incredible gifts that we get to give away to some of these amazing mums in our, wow. in our community, which is so cool. That's an incredible range of gifts. People I know. are so generous, aren't they? I know, so generous. So I better get that video of you and mum. Thank um, you. <laughs> but before we go any further, um, I think we should just pray for all the mums out there. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Lord, I thank you so much that we can come together and we can gather in this way. Maybe not in the same place, but Lord, we can gather in the same moment. And so God, I just ask from the outset, Lord, that you would be with us as we go through this gathering today, Lord God, that you would speak to us, Lord Jesus, in new and fresh ways, Lord God, that you would lead us into a deeper place for you, with you today, Lord. And God, we thank you so much for all the most amazing mums in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for all they've given up for us, Lord God, for the sacrifices they make for us, Lord. And today I ask God that you would bring a blessing about to every single mum or those in our lives that we would call mum, that you would bless each one today, Lord God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praise As he hears things Oh, yeah There is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear worship He hears faith Oh Yeah. Uh -huh. 
love most about your mum? Um, she always takes care of me. That she's kind and helpful and she loves other people and she cares about them. And for me the ball. She gives a good cuddles. She does the jobs for us and she loves me. I love that she says yes quite a lot. She's really good at baking. She helps me with a lot of things. My mum's so special because she 
is mum. Kind heart and her willingness to put everything that she has before all of us. Love that she's always there for me and she's very loving and kind. I love her because she's kind and she makes delicious food that I can always talk to her no matter what, she's always there for me. What face does mummy make when she's angry? She doesn't really have one, so. Like this. When she's angry, she just doesn't talk to anyone. I don't think she really has an angry face. She doesn't have an angry face. Okay. Um, do you reckon your brother can show us a better impersonation? Probably, yeah. Here it goes. Welcome to Curate Online and happy Mother's Day to Ooh. all of the mothers out there. Love those videos from families. So good. Uh, well, I'm not a mother, but you're a mother. I so. am. To your children. Yes, yeah, to so my children. It's and, pretty good. And also, like, my mum's not here, but mm. no doubt she's watching this. And so happy Mother's Day, mum. Uh, you're actually in our bubble, so it's all good. We'll see you soon, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, actually, you, you just saw my mum in the intro, so isn't she amazing? Happy Mother's Day, mum. Thank you. You are the absolute best. Everything that um, is good in my parenting comes from you, so thank what you. What about your dad? Oh, yeah. Well, dad too, clearly. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's fantastic. I know what we're trying to say. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. What we would love to see on the chats right now is just people giving shout-outs to their mum. Yes. So why don't you just... You know, drop it on the chat, a shout out to your mum uh, or to a mother figure in yeah. your life. Or uh, maybe if you're a mum, you might want to give a shout out to your children or to people that are significant in your life. Mm. We'd love to see all of that in the chat right now. And we just want to bless all of those names. Yeah, uh, yeah bless you. That'd May you be awesome. blessed if you're a mother today. Sounds That's right. good. Yeah. Well, it's Mother's Day. Um, and so we thought that we would... Uh, bring more like a, a little conversation rather than like a preachy message and we wanted to share something that really matters and is relevant to everyone so we thought that we would actually speak on relationships because I know we've all been in our bubbles and I know that like the best days that we've had um, in our bubbles are the days where our relationships are going well. And I know that for me, like the worst days is when that when we're clashing, you know, when things aren't going well in our relationships. And so we want to speak about relationships. That's right. After being locked down for six weeks or so uh, mm. with four children and some mm. of the six of us in our home, there's been plenty of great days <laughs> and there's been plenty of the other days as well, just like any family. And so just what an awesome opportunity while it's been fresh trying to think about, well, what's the difference between the great days yeah. and the not as great days? Mm. That's to put it lightly. Mm. Uh, you know, what is the difference? And so mm. it's an awesome conversation to have. Mm. I think when, you know, when there's pressure and, and the reality is, is that this for many families, for many people, and just when we're talking about relationships, we should say this, we're not just talking about marriages or families, we're talking about our flatting relationships or maybe our relationships with our parents or just all of the relational dynamics, maybe with our employers and all the different things we have in our life in church. Uh, the things we're gonna talk about today, I think are gonna be helpful to all of that, but here's the principle, is that when the river's low, the rocks will show. And in seasons like this, when we're stuck together for a while in ways that aren't usual, uh, you know, they can create pressure. And when the pressure comes on, uh, it's eventually, it, it, it's inevitable that eventually the river will run low and the rocks will show. And I know plenty of my rocks have shown over this time. I don't know, your rocks have shown. Can I even say you that? You can totally say that. Yep, I can say it because I already admitted my rocks. Yeah, yeah. clearly. <laughs> but uh, the rocks will show. And I, I, I want to just start by saying that's okay. 
That's like the ebbs and flows of seasons. That's all right. And when everything's going well, sometimes it can actually, the rocks are still there. It's just they're covered over. And so it's not like what's being created as new rocks. It's just what's being revealed are the rocks that when everything's going good, maybe they don't come to the surface as much. And so if you've had some rocks come up yeah. over this time, do not be overwhelmed. Welcome to humanity. We've <laughs> all got them. And, you know, we don't have to be terrified that there are rocks. In fact, it's just an opportunity to be like, oh, there's one. I didn't realize that was there or I didn't realize that was still there. And here's an opportunity that mm. now I can figure out what does that mean and what should I be doing about it? Yeah, I think we could view like the rocks shown as a bad thing or else we also have the opportunity to view it as not an easy thing, but as a really good thing, because like Joel said, how else will we know that it's there um, if it's not shown? We were watching Modern Family, which is just so funny. We love it. And but don't necessarily approve of it. It's, it's actually awesome. But um, they said uh, uh, on Modern Family, should we just sweep this under the rug as well? And, and then um, Cam said, yeah, you could sweep it under the rug so that someone will trip on it later. Like no one wants a lumpy rug. And so we think it's really good and it's best. If something is revealed, that's a good thing. We can deal with it. Yeah, that's right. And so we know that agitations, we know that time together, and we know that when we get depleted, we know that when stress is high, we know that these things reveal these mm. things. And so here's the principle we want you to understand. When the river runs low, the rocks will show, but let's not be afraid of the rocks because mm. ultimately you can never give away something you don't have. That life is not lived relationally from the outside in. Actually, Jesus teaches us it's from the inside out. And that's one of the great benefits of when the rocks are revealed uh, because we can't bring a level of health to any relationship that we don't first have inside of us. And let's be honest, most relationship problems are not communication problems. They're not technique problems. They're not a lack of skill issues. They're personal issues that we bring to our relationships, things that we have yeah. under our rug that other people trip over. So we want to have healthy relationships, but healthy relationships are a result of being healthy people. It's like uh, what the Proverbs say in Proverbs 4, uh, guard your heart, like guard your inner world, for from it flow the things of life. Or guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. It's the place that things flow from. So if we want healthy relationships, it's not about the other person. It's not about our boss, our spouse, our kids. It's not about our parents. It's about first and foremost us, because we're not responsible for them we are responsible yeah. for ourselves I think you're going to talk a bit about that but you know we want to figure out where's it flowing from you can't give away what you don't have you can't have peace in a relationship if you don't have peace mm. you can't have joy in a relationship if you don't have joy you can't have fun in a relationship if you're the one that's too serious <laughs> uh, that's a, just a little challenge to me uh, you know you can't have hope if you don't first carry hope you can't have vision unless you have vision it's got to come from the inside out and this is really what we want to say is like it's like maybe what we've got to do is read less books maybe what we've got to do is listen to less, less encouraging posts and less good ideas maybe what we don't have is a technique problem or a skill issue or a knowledge issue but actually we need to do some work on who we are and yeah. what we bring to our relationships yeah what was it you were saying to me the other day that you were reading that like the success of a parent with their child and with their relationship as they're older um, is directly determined by the relationship that someone has with their parents. Yeah, I, I thought that was incredible. It, it was, talk, that's exactly, it was talking about how what they've figured out is that obviously we all want our kids to have healthy relationships yeah. with us as parents, not just when they're younger, but as they grow up, you know, like in some ways that sort of successful parenting is still having a healthy relationship with your kid when they're older, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's all these books and different things about it, but what it's saying is all it really comes down to is this, is do you have a healthy relationship with your parents? Because how else would they learn to what it means to have a healthy relationship with their parents when they're older unless they can see you have a healthy relationship with your parents as you are mm. older? Which, mm. you know, that's the sort of stuff you don't want to read because it's way too confronting <laughs> and it holds the mirror up and makes you realise that maybe the problem's not out there, but it's in here. Mm. I love in Ephesians 6 verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It says, Honour your mother and father, which is the first commandment with a promise. The promise is so that it may go well with you and that you will enjoy long life on this earth. 
Isn't it amazing that the, it's the first commandment that says, if you do this, there's actually a blessing that is attached to it. It will go well with you. And, you know, I know that there's many of you watching this and maybe it's not possible or definitely not easy to do something to restore and add greater health to the relationship with your parent. Um, but if there is something you can do, if it is possible, um, then we want to encourage you to do it because maybe your future relationship with your child actually depends on that too. So... Yeah, I, I think one of, like we've been talking about this this week and one of the things we wanted to share was like in, in that verse, you know, the, there's these passages in the New Testament letters that have relationship yeah. advice. And I love that. I love that like our faith in Jesus is not just for spiritual rituals mm. and it's not just for church time and it's not just for, you know, those things that are obviously spiritual. It's for the everyday things. It's to realize that faith in Jesus is supposed to affect our work and it's supposed to affect our sleep and it's supposed mm. to affect our marriage and it's supposed to affect our uh, friendships and I love in the, the different letters that Paul wrote he always offers after talking about how amazing Jesus is and all that stuff he always offers like advice for those practical areas of life but we've noticed that there's a there's a theme in the way he offers advice and part of it is you just read it in Ephesians yeah. 6 but um before that he gives advice to husbands to wives to parents to children mm. to uh you know, bosses and employees. He gives all of this advice. But what's interesting is he always gives the advice to the person, never yeah. to someone else to give to the person. So he, he doesn't write, husbands, get your wives to do this. And he doesn't write, wives, get your husbands to do this. Even in that passage he wrote, he, he's writing to children, obey your parents. He's not writing, parents, get your children to yeah. obey you. He And and what, I'm, what I've noticed is this thing is, um, He's really saying you're responsible for yourself. You need to take personal responsibility that you have a ability to respond and the better you can take, make the appropriate response, the healthier you will be and therefore the healthier the relationship will have. So isn't it interesting that even in the Bible, he's yeah. not writing to parents about what their children should do. He's writing to children about what they should do in relationship to their parents. And this is just such an important principle yeah. that the, the the great thing is, is the more attention we actually give to ourselves is not selfish. Mm. It's actually about building a health in us mm. that we might be able to then give away something we have to our relationships that we have. And the yeah. more we stop worrying about other people's behavior and we just worry about ourselves. I mean, we know this, right? Like every time I'm more annoyed at you rather than just focusing on what I brought is actually it stay it keeps the confrontation rather than heals it. And every time a kid's annoyed at each other, mm. you know, yeah, well, like I just think of it like this. If I start trying to control you, I end up out of control because I'm trying to control what is not in my control. And I end up out truth. of control. I end up this guy, <laughs> eh? This guy. Well, I'm I, not probably the one that does it more, so, you know. <laughs> no comment. Um, you know, so if, if we try and control the people in our lives all of a sudden, because it's like it's blaringly obvious to us, right? They need to change that. And so we start trying to go there. But when we try and control someone else, we end up out of control. We end up out of authority because that ooh, is ooh. not. Tell us more about that. I think we end up out of authority because God has given us the ability. Like we have been, he's given us, um, what's it called, babe? Um, Dominion. Dominion, He's given us free will over ourselves, but not over others. And so we end up out of authority. I think we end up out of grace because He gives us grace for ourselves, but He doesn't give you grace to change somebody else. He actually would prefer to speak to them because He's better <laughs> at speaking to them than you are. And so I always think for like when I, when I try and control somebody, it's like, man, that is a lot of effort for not a lot of gain. Why don't I just encourage them and point them to Jesus because he's going to do a heck of a better job than I am. Um, and yeah, I think part of taking personal responsibility is resisting the temptation to take personal responsibility away from others. And that's what we do when we start trying to put what we think they should do on them. Yep. I'll, yep. I mean, that's that's got to be one of the biggest things, yeah. right? It's just how often we try to, we want to control others. Mm. I, I get why that is because totally. it, it means that they're the problem and we're not and we have no responsibility. Mm. I've, I've been thinking about this, that there's like a, 
something people say, it takes two people to have a healthy relationship. Mm. Um, but I, I've actually been wondering whether or not it actually does or not, or whether or not it just takes one person mm. to go, actually, I want a healthy relationship. And I know a healthy relationship is firstly going to start with me. And hopefully this encourages people that are maybe married to people that in this season, you're not on the same page on all different things. I don't think the healthy relationship you desire in the future is on the other side of you both agreeing at the exact same time that you want a healthy relationship it does it does it just takes one That's actually so to go no i'm going to lead this in a healthier direction and the way i'm going to lead it is i'm going to become healthier i'm going to take ownership for all of my stuff i'm going to become a non-anxious presence yeah. in my relationships and i'm going to bring a stability and a calmness and i'm not going to bite and react and all of those sorts of things i'm going to by the grace of god grow in self-control mm. and patient endurance, all these great things you need in relationships over the long term. I'm going to grow in these things and I'm going to trust that as I grow in them, it's actually going to set a tone. It's going to set a pathway. It's going to set, it's going to bring leadership and the other relationships in my life, they're going to like be inspired by that and yeah. they're eventually going to come on board with that. And I think time would show the more it actually just takes one to start the process, which I think is encouraging for people. I actually find that really exciting. I love to do this. I love thinking, okay, I am, you know, I'm going to get up today and I'm not going to say anything discouraging. You're not going to let me get and, to you. And yeah, I'm going to, you know, and I love it because, and I love not announcing it because I'm like, <laughs> You know, after a day or two or three, all of a sudden there's going to be like a shift in the household and they didn't know it was coming, but I did because I was changing something inside of me. So I think it's fun. Very good. I, I think, um, you know, we've been thinking about this idea and I think it, it's the next part of that personal responsibility. There's a proverb in the scriptures. Many people would have heard it, even if you're not somebody that normally goes to church, you've probably heard this before because it, it's become just like a general proverb of yeah. wisdom. Uh, it's out of Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way they should go and when they are older, they will not depart from it. Uh, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. I, I think a lot of that proverb's been misunderstood, and this is just another point in growing healthy relationships, is that um, we think of train up a child as like discipline, boundaries, uh, you know, those sorts of things. And th that's definitely a part of it, but that's actually not what this verse is. This train up a child, the, the original Hebrew language for train up, it's not a disciplinary like structure, boundaries language. It's actually like a nurturing uh, you know, like feeding language is from the same group of language that it would mean to like breastfeed or where to receive your nourishment. It's it, That's actually the idea. And so what we want to do when we're like for people who are parents out there, yes, do we need boundaries and discipline? That is a part. There is lots of wisdom in the Bible about that. But I think what this is trying to say is teach your children where to get their nourishment from in life and when they're older, they will not depart from it. It's teach them that they can go to God for themselves. Teach them that they can actually strengthen their own spirits. Encourage themselves by the Holy Spirit. Teach them that actually they need to get their validation from God. That they need to get their they need to get their security in things that other aren't other people's opinions. And if we can actually train them up to receive from God what we were designed to receive from God, it creates a stability and integrity, a health, a peace in us that. Will lead to healthy relationships because now we won't be looking for other people to fill voids because we've already trained up our children and and you know people in flats people who are friends going on journeys together people in small groups we can be encouraging each other in this like we can train each other up on where to go for the right things and then as we go on in life we won't depart from it and it'll continue to produce health and health and health which i think is awesome it's really really great are you wanting me to keep going I kind of do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come to this little. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna share a few little practical things. This may be all been a bit ethereal, I don't know, but here's some <laughs> practical things. Here's some response abilities, some abilities to respond that we all have. They're from the teachings of Jesus. I think they're gonna be fantastic. And so if you're writing notes, yeah. write these down. If you're engaging in the chats, we'd love to have you engage in the chats. Let us know which ones are particularly doing yeah. it for you. Uh, you know, we'd love to hear what's really resonating out there. So Katie, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, How many have we got? Sure. We got five or so? We've got five. Yeah, great, five. Yeah, we've got five. Yeah, I love this. So we have the ability to respond and that's our 
personal responsibility is that, hey, in whatever comes my way, I have the ability to respond in numerous different ways. And so I think what's really important, and especially when we're spending so much time with each other at the moment, when we are hurt, when we are wronged, when someone says something insensitive or, or just rubs you up the wrong way, we have, we have the, uh, the personal responsibility to be able to forgive every single time. I love there's a verse and, and Peter goes to Jesus and, and he says to him, if someone, you know, if someone does you wrong, how many times do I have to forgive them? And he says up to seven times. And I love it because I reckon someone had like offended him six times. And he was like, you know, is this it now? Is it seven? Like, because that's your favorite number, God. And he goes, no, Peter, seven times 77. He's saying as many times as necessary. And so even though it hurts when somebody says something that's, you know, hurtful, we have the personal responsibility to be able to respond in forgiveness. That's right. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't no. matter whether or not they apologize. No. Nope. Doesn't matter. Like uh, people apologizing and being sorry and repentant is only a condition of reconciliation. Mm. It's not a condition of forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, reconciliation requires repentance and forgiveness. Our responsibility, if we've been wronged, is to forgive. Yeah. It's their responsibility to. And it's, once again, it's understanding yeah. each other's roles. Okay. Yeah. So we can respond to hurt. You know, we can respond to suffering or hard times. We actually have a choice how to respond. And I want to encourage you just again, even as the season keeps getting deeper and deeper, you have the ability to respond uh, and to choose your response. The reality is that the world doesn't choose your response. The news shouldn't choose your response. Or well, we're not people just blaming the world. We're people that get, we have a response ability. We have to choose how we're going to respond to hard times, to yeah. suffering. And I love what Jesus' brother James said, and no doubt he got it from his brother Jesus. He says, consider it pure joy when you go through hard times because you know mm -hmm. that God is at work in them. And I know out there, people are going through incredibly hard times of all we know, there's people dealing with loved ones who are sick and dying. We know that there's people dealing with job losses and economic losses and, and huge uncertainty about the future. But we have the ability to choose how we respond. We, we can get all stressed out in our behavior. We can use the season as an excuse to, uh, you know, for our lashing out or for our anxiety, or we can go, no, I have a response ability and I'm yeah. gonna choose to consider it joy because God's at work somewhere in it. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And we also have the responsibility. Um, Jesus says, bless those that curse you. Now, I'm sure many of us, well, I hope you don't have people in your life that says, you know, I curse you. <laughs> if you do, maybe just, you know. Some voodoo dolls. Yeah, I don't know. Get them out of your life. But, but I think often we, we can use statements like always. You always do this. You never we do never that. We never use those statements in our <laughs> home, eh? Never. Well, Never. Yeah. <laughs> but Maybe we're trying to get better at not. We are. Absolutely. We have to eliminate that from our vocabulary because what are we saying? We're saying you will always be like this. You never do that. And to me, I think that is, it's not an outright curse, but, but we are kind of cursing that other person. And Jesus says, bless those that curse you. So next time someone says, oh, you always do this, you never do that. I want you to, with it out loud, that could be funny, um, or just in your mind, in your heart, why don't you pray a blessing over them? Lord, I pray, I, would you bless them? Would you bless them in their heart? Lord, I pray that you would bless the work of their hands. Lord, I pray that, that you would bless them in all ways. May they, may they be fruitful. And when you start to bless them, what's going to happen as well is that your heart towards them is going to completely change. And so bless those that curse you. We have, we are able to respond that way. I know. It's very hard though, especially when people troll me online. Uh, or <laughs> I troll, love his trolls. It's so funny. <laughs> or troll, or troll the, the Curate pages. Check out Curate Auckland ones. It's hilarious. Oh, I know. But you know, they like, don't like female it's amazing. But it's amazing how when, when people like do that, how our natural response is sort of like to meet them at their level. But it's that responsibility yeah. is realizing now we can we get to determine the level we come in at the conversation at, not them. Yeah. And uh, I, I really like that. Uh, judging. You know, like, mm. oh, what I'm really saying is we get our ability, we get to choose our ability to respond when other people 
aren't doing what we think they should be doing or seem oblivious to issues that seem obvious to us. I love what Jesus said. Um, Why worry about the speck in your friend's eye? This is in Matthew 7, when you have a log in your own eye. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get the log out of your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. There's a couple of things in this passage. The first is, when you're starting to notice specks in others, it's a great indicator you have probably got a log. Okay, you know, like, because when you don't have a log, you don't care about other specs. You're just worrying about yourself in the best possible sense, not in a non-compassionate, but in a, just a personal responsibility mm. way. And I know, actually, every time I'm getting, like, judgmental around the home or why isn't this done or, you know, you can nod, you like, when it builds up of, like, you know, like, that feeling of out of control, when I'm starting to notice all the specs, it's, I'm starting to learn that it's actually an indicator in that moment I've got a log. It's not the speck. I know you're like, finally, you see it. Uh, I love this. But, you know, it's like, oh, if I actually put the mirror up, it's like, it's not about those specks. It's about something going on in me that's causing me to only be able to see the specks right now. And if I got rid of the log, not it says um, you would be able to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. But what, what it really means is when you get rid of the log, the speck's no longer going to be a big deal because you're going to realize, huh, that's their problem. That's not my problem. Mm. And this, you know what I mean? And not crossing the boundaries of what's their responsibility now. So I, I'm noticing when we're getting judgmental of others, yeah. it's an opportunity to respond, not to judge, but to actually go, what is this saying about me and what yeah. I need to deal with? Why do I care so much about that or whatever yeah. it is? Yeah, yeah, this might be particularly relevant in this time when we're all spending so much time together. I yep. know like I've been doing yes. so much housework, so much cooking, like well, you wouldn't believe. No. <laughs> hey, so much. And then this guy one day, I this hope this guy. is okay. <laughs> he, you know, started being like, you know, cleaning the house and stuff like that, which is so awesome. I love that. He does, he's very helpful. But this one day he was being particularly helpful, you know, and doing a lot. And he started trying to like tell me that maybe I had missed some things and I was just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's the log and the speck. It's the log <laughs> and the speck. Okay. Okay, All right. he's amazing. He's absolutely incredible I'm okay. and amazing I'm, I'm hard worker. Getting, hey, here's the thing though, right? And hopefully people get this, is that we never pretend to have it all together. Yeah. But here's the thing is that not we're, we've got a better relationship now than we've ever had. And it, it's not because we're pastors. It's not because of anything like that. We have an incredibly, what mm. can be a stressful life at times. Uh, and we've got, you know, kids and we're young and all of that stuff. But we have committed to like, taking responsibility for ourselves and to getting better each day. And even though sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back, that's the reality. And so if you're out there, it's not about being arriving anywhere. It's just mm. about being committed to the journey of continually mm. trying. Yeah. yeah, so good. Hey, and this is the last one. And, and I think that this is so important is that when we are depleted, it's our responsibility to get refreshed. See, when we are depleted, and we feel like our tank is empty, what we want to do, I think quite naturally, what all of us do is we start to look at all of the people mm. that should be filling us. We're like, if they just gave me more attention and like filled my tank there, if they just helped out more, that would fill me a bit more. If they did that, I would feel more full. But we have got to realize that we are responsible, that we are able to refresh ourselves. We are able to refresh ourselves. Jesus said, um, it says in John 7 verse 37, on the day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and he shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. And so, you know, we can refresh ourselves by going to Jesus. We can refresh ourselves in his word. We can refresh ourselves. Do you know that you can encourage yourself like you might feel like discouraged. You don't need to wait for encouragement from the people in you your write life. write a letter to yourself. You can actually just <laughs> encourage yourself. Hey, you know what? You are doing amazing. Look at how far you've come. Mm. Look at what you've overcome in your life. You can just encourage yourself mm. in the Lord. I think that that's something incredible en that we can do. Encouraging ourselves is actually reminding ourselves of truths. Oh, and when so that true. That, when that happens, it gives us courage for yeah. what's in front of us. Absolutely. I encourage myself all the time. Probably because I don't encourage you enough. 
No, you're amazingly encouraging, <laughs> but I just take it as a personal responsibility. He's not going to know the moments that I'm feeling discouraged and I can encourage myself. That is something that I can do. And like he said, I encourage myself in the Lord. It's with his truth that I encourage myself with. But, you know, maybe... Um, you're, maybe you've got a spouse or a child or someone in your life that isn't someone of faith and you're like, well, how do I point them to Jesus? You know, because that's where we get refreshed. And how are they going to get their tank filled? How are they going to get refreshed in Him? And I think we can really lead by example. We can get refreshed ourselves in His presence. We can get refreshed ourselves in His truth and in His Word. We can let them see the spiritual disciplines that, that we have and we can let them observe that we actually can bear fruit in season and out of season. And they and what I mean by that is that we can um, we can be like full and flourishing when things are going well and when they're not. And they're going to notice that and say, hey, how is it that you can do that? And that's when you can say, hey, I, you know, and share about your faith in Jesus. And so that's something I know that a lot of people are wondering, well, how do I point the, the people in my life to Jesus when they don't know him? Mm, I love it. I love it. So we're saying today, hard times. Yeah can cause the river to run low. Mm -hmm. When the river runs low, the rocks will show. Let's not be overwhelmed by that. Let's realize that's actually a gift because when we see the rocks, it means we have an opportunity to begin working on them by the grace of God. And the gift of that, that's actually a gift because if we want healthy relationships, healthy relationships always start with first being a healthy person. Mm -hmm. And so by dealing with the rocks, we can have greater levels of health, which will eventually echo into our relationships. The best way to think about that is what can we take personal responsibility for in our life? We have, we're given a responsibility, an ability to respond. And there's many, like we've only just pulled on a few, but the scripture is filled with lots of wise advice about mm -hmm. all the different things we can respond with. Uh, one of the things I love um, about just this whole online thing, and uh, you know, I don't know how long we've been doing it now, maybe seven weeks or something, yeah. but what I love about it is that there's so many of you joining us, and uh, maybe if you're joining us on, on online today and you're not a part of one of the physical locations, you should just throw in the chat right now, that's me, we're from wherever, we're from wherever, we've never been to a physical curate building, but here we are, we're, we're tuning in from yeah. somewhere else. What I love is that people are jo joining us from all different parts of their journey. And we've always said at Curate that people can belong no matter what they believe. That what you'll find at Curate is people who love you, want the best for you, and can accept you right where you're at because we all know that Jesus has accepted us right where we're at. So we don't feel like you need to pretend for us. We don't feel like you need to pretend your, your marriage is better than it is. We don't need you to pretend your life is better than it is. We actually just love you because God just loves you and His love is flowing through us. And so if you're a part of our online community um, and you, you're in all different parts of the journey, welcome it's so awesome to have you a part of it thank you for taking the risk and tuning in and making the effort but we also want to let you know that um, even though we can't gather together physically right now through this avenue we can actually lead you to have your own faith that you don't actually have to have a, pers a, a connection with God through Curate or through Katie or through me or through this avenue, as much as this can encourage you and help you and has purpose, actually God wants to have a relationship with you just between himself and you. And what I love about God is that he actually is the example of taking personal responsibility, that he recognized that humanity was broken and it was filled with sin because of our rebellion and distrust of God. And I don't need to probably, you know, convince you of how far short you and I fall of God's standard because I don't know about you, but I fall short of my own standards. So how much more so a perfect and loving God would we fall short of His sometimes? And I feel ashamed and guilty sometimes of just the choices I make or the regrets that I have just to my own standard, let alone God's. So, you know, I know we can be overwhelmed by those things, but God actually took responsibility for that issue upon himself he's like they can't fix this but I can fix this even though they made the mistake I'm going to be the solution and I just love that that God is the one pursuing us and so he set out a salvation plan and 2,000 years ago he came to this earth in the form of his son Jesus and he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross for you and for me and for Katie but probably me especially uh, you know he died for us and he died for us because we weren't able to die for ourselves. 
In fact, our sin, the Bible teaches us, required, you know, it required paying the price. It needed a punishment. It, there was an injustice to it. But God wanted to be the justifier. And so he sent his son Jesus to die in our place, to take the punishment that we deserved, to experience the distance from God that we would have had to experience, and was raised on the third day later because death could not hold him because he had no sin. So he overcame death. He stole the keys of death. He unlocked death. And so what I love today is because of what Jesus has done, you can have your own relationship with God. Not a guessing relationship, not like a, I wonder if he loves me. I wonder if I'm going to heaven. I wonder if he hears me. You can have a sure, truth-based relationship because of what Jesus has done. And here's the thing, you. but we've been talking about responsibility. You can only have a relationship with God. He's taken responsibility to make a way, but you actually have to make, take the responsibility to respond. What does responding mean? I don't want to get down on you or be heavy on you, but I do want to teach the truth of the Scriptures. The Scriptures say that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And until we're willing to take personal responsibility for the choices we've made in our lives that have offended God and, and you know not lived up to the standard we should have, until we're willing to take responsibility for those, we actually can't come into relationship with God. We need to recognize that we have sinned but Jesus is willing to forgive sin if we would go and seek his forgiveness for it. And so today, if you want to have a relationship with God, it starts by recognizing that you don't and then recognizing that he's done everything to make it possible. But what we do need to do is to respond in repentance, which is turning away from that life and turning towards God, accepting his forgiveness, accepting his love and welcoming his presence into our life. So right where you're at right now, I would love for you to make that decision. I know there's many people making that decision right now. If you're making that decision, let us know you're making that decision. Put it in the chat. Yes, that's me. If you're watching through one of our platforms like Church Online, you can raise a visual, uh, a virtual hand. Click that button because people want to celebrate with you right now because you're not just making a decision between you and God. You're making a decision other people have been praying for for your life and believing for. So would love to see you responding right now. Isn't that amazing? The people responding is very, very it's cool. Incredible. And Katie's actually going to pray for you all, uh, awesome. everybody that's making that decision right now. Awesome. Hey, you can just repeat after me wherever you are. You can repeat after me in your head or out loud. Um, but the most important thing is that we pray this with our heart. And so Heavenly Father... I thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that because of your sacrifice, that because of your sacrifice I, have life. I have life. I am washed clean. I'm washed clean. I, am redeemed. I am redeemed. I have hope. I have hope. You, are the way. you are the way. You are the truth. You are the, truth. You are the, life. You are the life. Thank you for giving me a new life in you. Thank you for giving me a new life in you. I am a new creation. I'm a new creation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's awesome. Very, very We're cool. celebrating with you. Hey, stick around for a moment because it's been awesome Mother's yeah. Day, but there's a few things people need to know before you go anywhere. I love preaching with you. We don't get to do it often enough. It's hard to prepare together, but it's fun to do it together. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. It's fun to share the weight of it. And really, I'm just following you. I know I'm supposed to be the leader of our house, but I'm just following you towards relational health, you know? Oh, no, you're amazing. <laughs> Hey, if you are joining us and we do, you're not known to us, we just want to let you know we would love to get to know you. We'd love for you to be able to stay in the loop with all things Curate. So actually, we've got this whole connection hub. You can go there. The link's coming up on the screen right now, curatechurch.com slash connection. We would love to get to know you. Just drop your details in there. Uh, there's all different things. If you made a decision today, we'd love to know so that we can pray for you, support you, get a Bible to you. Uh, if you're new and you want to stay in the loop, receive our community communications yeah. would love maybe you want to get in a, a small group we've got virtual small groups happening through zoom would love to have you a part of that maybe you have needs you need help you need prayer if you head to that link man we can connect with you it's gonna be awesome yeah otherwise thanks so much for joining us happy mother's day to everybody don't forget to send in your videos don't forget to send in your videos those prizes are going to be announced at 8 p.m it's one thing we can't just let them go yet what? because do you know that we've fed like over 5,000 people as of this week through Curate Cares, wow, how good and is none that? of that would be possible without everyone's generosity. And so 
like we just thank you for the continued yeah. generosity i love that actually a whole bunch of people from around the country around the world have started giving through curate online because they want to partner with curate to make a difference and so thank you to everybody who gives but if you're out there and you want to start being generous to curate man it's going to go to good use we're helping so many people making such a difference so honor god in that way be generous with your finances links coming up right now curatechurch.com slash give you can just give directly on the website which is really cool Awesome. Very, very cool. Well, we'll see you next week.